Hello, this is Athena Lemon from the Wolbachia Project, and today we're talking about Lab 4, gel electrophoresis. We've already extracted DNA from our arthropod, amplified that DNA with PCR, and now we're going to visualize that DNA with gel electrophoresis. The electro in electrophoresis should tell you that we're going to be using an electric field. DNA is negatively charged, so if we make an electric field, we know that the DNA will be attracted to the positive end because DNA is negatively charged. It'll be attracted to the positive end of this electric field. But if we wanted to slow it down to separate DNA out by size, how can we slow DNA down? We slow it down by running it through what's called um, an agarose gel. Agarose is derived from seaweed. It's that slimy, um, slimy stuff on seaweed. And you can think of it like jello. So we're going to be running it through something like Jell-O to separate it out, to slow down the DNA enough to separate it out by size. So to move through this agarose gel, the DNA has to wave through this agarose gel to get to the positive end of the electric field. So if we start out with our DNA at the top of the gel, the really small fragments are going to run through that gel really quickly. They're small, they can find all the holes and go down that gel really quickly. And that means that the smaller fragments are going to end up at the bottom. Whereas the bigger fragments of DNA will take a long time to go all the way through the gel and move down the space of the gel. So the bigger fragments are going to be closer to the top of the gel. And we can use that to separate our DNA into sizes so that we can visualize our DNA and know what size it is. How do we read our final gel and how do we know what the final sizes are of our DNA? If you remember from the last lab, the fragment that we were um, amplifying through PCR for the bar arthropod barcoding gene was 708 base pairs, whereas the Wolbachia specific fragment is 438 base pairs. So when you load your gel, you always load a ladder, and that's DNA that we already know the sizes of. So we'll use our ladder at the known size to see if our arthropod band can be found at about 708 base pairs, and if our Wolbachia band can be found at about 438 base pairs. DNA is colorless, so how do we know that the DNA has run enough through the gel so that we can see a change in the sizes of the DNA when we look at the final product of the gel? We add a loading dye to the gel, and this loading dye is normally green or yellow. The loading dyes separate into each of their component colors, so green dye will separate into blue and yellow. The yellow dye has the shortest molecular fragment size as compared to the other colors, so it will move the fastest. This happens to be about the same size of the smallest DNA fragments of your gel, which is why you want to run your gel until the yellow is about three quarters down the gel. Loading dye doesn't directly correlate with where the DNA is, it just gives us an idea of where our DNA is. So we're able to separate out the DNA enough to see size differences, but not enough to run it off of the gel. I'm using a gel green DNA stain to be able to visualize our actual DNA with blue light. If you look closely, you can see the blue loading dye running behind the DNA. What does it mean if you see a fragment of DNA on your gel called a band? That means that your PCR amplified something, and if it's the right size, uh, 438 base pairs or 708 base pairs, it means that you amplified either the Wolbachia specific gene or the arthropod barcoding gene. And it worked. Congratulations. If you have a band at the 438 base pair, uh, size, that means that you're positive for Wolbachia. You were able to detect Wolbachia in your arthropod, which is a positive result. After you've determined if your arthropod is infected with Wolbachia or not, or if you amplified that cytochrome oxidase 1 gene, that arthropod barcoding gene, you can move on to the sequencing part the of the next lab, where you can actually see what is the exact arthropod that I collected, and what can its DNA tell me? 
And what strain of Wolbachia, if your arthropod was infected with Wolbachia, what strain of Wolbachia is associated with my arthropod? And that can be found in the next lab, Sequencing and Bioinformatics. Thank you.